Welcome to Two Fonded Books. My name is Janelle, and this is Aaron. Hi there, nice to meet you. <laughs> it is nice to meet them. <laughs> Sorry. Were you gonna keep going? <laughs> Okay, I'm going now. <clears throat> <laughs> so 10 days ago was World Book Day, and in the past we celebrated by going to the library and the bookstores, uh, but because of uh, COVID, that's not possible right now. And so we did lots of reading at home, and we also purchased some books from uh, the book outlet. So now we're going to look at these. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, no, you had to say, tell them about the little free libraries that I forgot to mention. I'm going to do it at the end, okay. I think. Well, we did a tour of, also, we also did a tour of little free libraries. And, uh, and so I'm going to include the pictures here. We took a picture of each little free library that we visited. There's a, a crescent in our city, Leopold Crescent, and there are six little free libraries on that crescent. So we visited those plus a couple other that were in the neighborhood. So I'm going to include those pictures here so you can see those little free libraries. And then I'm going to show you what I got. Um, I only got two books. Um, this is the the Bravest Voices by Ida Cook. Um, this one sounded super interesting. It's a memoir of two sisters' heroism during the Nazi era. Um, but what was interesting about this was the connection with the opera, that they used a connection with the opera and people that they knew from that and touring and whatever um, in order to, to save people. And so that, that just sounded really interesting. And then I also found um, also, uh, World War II, this one's fiction though, The Light Over London by Julia Kelly. And this one is the, the story of two women separated by generations, um, World War II London. And uh, it's a novel of forgotten antique treasures, remembered triumphs, fierce friendships, and life-changing family secrets. I'm sorry, I have to remember to do things on the opposite side today because Aaron is with me and Aaron is awesome. Okay, so let's dive into this box and see what we have. You can't see the box on the screen, oh well. A box of paper. <laughs> <laughs> A box of paper. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna go first. I got Murder She Read. The quotable Miss Marple. So I just thought that looked so cute. So it's all just quotes by um, Miss Marple. Here's one from The Murder at the Vicarage. I know that in books it is always the most unlikely person, but I never find that rule applies in real life. Ooh. All right, my turn. Go ahead. All right, I got uh, Slow Burn. Slow burn. Uh, it's just a book about exercising slower, which who doesn't want to exercise <laughs> more slowly and yet getting uh, better results. So uh, hopefully that just means going for a stroll uh, around the block. I'm into that. <laughs> All right. Oh yes, I got Birdie and the Tin Man by Peter Lovesy. This is a really short series that he wrote, historical mysteries and um, Bertie is the main character and at that this point he's the prince yeah he's the prince of wales so it's before he becomes the king so they're set it's set in um the a victorian time period because he ends up becoming king edward the seventh um and i have the second book in this series but um uh he, this one's the first and so i was uh i'm really curious to see uh, a historical mystery series that has um the prince of wales as the main character and investigator <laughs> All right, and I have uh, Discipline Equals Freedom by Jocko uh, Willink. And Jocko is someone I follow on social media, and so this is kind of like a 
personal development type of book that applies to business and health and fitness and all that. So, um, yeah, yeah. that book. Plus, it's just a really nice looking book. Yeah. The pages are, it's like gold or it's not gold, it's like silver. Very nice. Okay. Oh, and I was excited to find this. This is The Lady Vanishes by Ethel, Ethel Lena White. Um, the Lady Vanishes is what the, the movie ended up being called. I think Hitchcock did it as a movie. Um, but it was initially published as... Hmm... I can't remember now. Um, but it wasn't initially published as The Lady Vanishes. Anyway, um, this this is a really interesting story about um, a woman who is going home from a tour in Europe back to England and um, she meets someone on the train and then our main character falls asleep and when she wakes up this woman is gone and nobody on the train will admit that they saw her. And so it's just, you know, like what's happening here. So I'm really excited to, uh, that I got a hold of it. All right. Uh, I have also got the Checklist Manifesto by Atul Gawande. I should have practiced that name first. Is <laughs> <laughs> there anyone else in here whose names I can't remember? Uh, this is a uh, fairly well-known book um, and kind of a game changer uh, in, uh, in business about how to create systems even on something as simple as a checklist. So he kind of goes through the history of checklists, which I know sounds weird, but uh, it, uh, I think, I believe uh, Atul talks about like the medical industry and how checklists help to save many people's lives. And uh, so it's kind of a neat book. Cool. There we go. So as you may already be noticing, Aaron and I have very different reading tastes, <laughs> but that's okay, right? Oh yes, and I got um, Mistletoe and Murder by Carola Dunn. This is from her Daisy Dalrymple historical mystery series. I'm collecting the series and, and I only have a few left to get and this is one of them. And I love these new edition covers. I think these are fantastic. So this is a um, historical mystery series set in England in the 20s. All right, and this is uh, Competitive Strategy by uh, Michael Porter. Um, I took a class, it was kind of like a, a, for my MBA, it, uh, I went to Zurich and took a class there that was kind of taught online and with a local teacher, plus, uh, plus we watched some Michael Porter um, uh, classes. He's a Harvard professor. And so this book is uh, one of of two books. He also wrote Competitive Advantage, which I own. And these books kind of led to my uh, MBA uh, thesis, which uh, turned into my book um, about sales funnels. And so it kind of changed my life. And so that class in Zurich uh, and this uh, this book and Michael Porter himself and just his teaching style uh, were all very influential to me and, uh, and everything I do in, in business. So happy to finally get my hands on that book. Cool beans. It is cool beans. All right, I'm going to do a couple books this time around because, secret, I ordered more than Aaron did. All right, this is The Western Canon by Harold Bloom, The Books and School of the Ages. Um, I like Harold Bloom. He was a professor somewhere in the States. Um, but this one is um, infused with a love of learning, compelling in its arguments for a unifying writ written culture. It argues eloquently and brilliantly against the politicization of literature and presents a guide to the great works and essential writers of the ages. The Western Canon, Harold Bloom's book, much discussed and praised in publications, blah, 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 offers a da dazzling display of erud erudition mixed with passion. So yeah, that just sounded cool. And then I also got my own copy of Marilla of Green Gables by Sarah McCoy. This was the book that did not win the World Book Day book battle, <laughs> but that's okay. I still love it and I'm glad to have a copy of it myself because I, yeah, I'm totally planning to reread it. My turn? Yep. <clears throat> All right. Uh, this book by uh, Brandon Webb is called uh, Mastering Fear, a Navy SEAL's Guide. And um, I don't know anything about the book, but uh, the people on the back who kind of praise it are uh, people I recognize and admire. And it reminded me a little bit of um, David Goggin's book, 
uh, I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> I think he only wrote one book anyway. But um, he was a, like a Navy SEAL kind of guy who learned to like overcome challenges and um, became sort of uh, uh, sort of rewrote the story of his life. Uh, and so anyway, it kind of reminded me of that. So I wanted to, to check it out. Okay, and so, oh, I have Conan Doyle for the Defense by Margalit Fox, how Sherlock Holmes's creator turned real life detective and freed a man wrongly imprisoned for murder. So this is true crime that just sounded super cool. And then I also got, oh yes, Singapore Sapphire by A.M. Stewart. So this is a historical mystery set in, I believe, yeah, 1910 in Singapore. I've read this and the other in the series um, and quite enjoyed it. And it's a book I know I'll want to reread. So when I saw it, you know, for a cheap on book outlet, I snatched it up. All right, uh, deep work by uh, Cal Newport is a book I've wanted to read for a long time. And uh, Cal Newport's whole thing is um, uh, in business. Lots of people focus on productivity and uh, trying to get more done, but Cal's approach is more about um, getting ultra focused on, on a project and uh, that you can get more done and more effective work by getting kind of like this deep amount of uh, intense concentration when you're working. Cool. All right. Now this is a book I had never heard of, but I am interested in um, the Titanic and the events surrounding that. So this is called A Night to Remember by Walter Lord, the classic account of the final hours of the Titanic. And so I believe that this was published um, not immediately after, but close to. It was first published in 1955 and it remains the definitive classic tale of the sinking of the Titanic. So yeah, that just sounded that just sounded really interesting. I'd never heard of it before, but um, yeah, there you go, the Titanic. All right, and um, this book by Benjamin Graham, the Intelligent Investor. It is uh, well, as the subtitle indicates, the definitive book in value investing. It's the book that Warren Buffett swears by. It's been on my list to purchase for a long time, but uh, sometimes it's hard to buy, sometimes it's super expensive, so the stars aligned and I was able to get my hands on this book. Okay, and the last two are mine. This is Ken Follett's Night Over Water. Um, this was, oh yes, historical, September 1939, England is at war with Nazi Germany in Southampton, the world's most luxurious airliner, the legendary Pan Am Clipper, takes off for its final flight to neutral America. Aboard are the cream of society and the dregs of humanity, all fleeing the war for reasons of their own, shouted by a danger they do not know exists and headed straight into a storm of violence, intrigue, and betrayal. So yeah, who doesn't love a little story about intrigue and betrayal. I'm going to start a booktube channel called The Cream of Society and the Dregs of Humanity. <laughs> <laughs> watch for it. I'd watch that. Okay, and then the final book, and this was one that I heard about from Becca at Hicks Picks Books. This is Dorothy and Jack by Gina D'Alfonso, The Transforming Friendship of Dorothy L. Sayers and C.S. Lewis which just sounded really interesting to me. The funny thing is, is I'm like pretty familiar with both of those writers, but it never, I never made the connection in my mind that they were contemporaries and that they may have known each other. <laughs> and so I just thought that this sounded really interesting. What happens when we push past the surface and allow real grounded, mutually challenging and edifying friendships to develop? We need only look at the little known friendship between eminent Christian thinkers Dorothy L. Sayer and C.S. Lewis to find out. Uh, born out of a fan letter that celebrated mystery novelist Sayer's work, uh, that celebrated mystery novelist Sayer's wrote to Lewis as his star was just beginning to rise. This friendship between a married woman and a longtime bachelor developed over years of correspondence as the two discovered their mutual admiration of each other's writing, thinking, and faith. So yeah, it just sounded kind of interesting. So there you have it. That was our World Book Day book outlet book haul. Um, so thanks for joining us. Thank you, Aaron, for guest starring on my fabulous channel. Thank you for letting me guest star. Yeah. 
And keep your eye open for Aaron's new channel called... The Cream of Society and the Dregs of Humanity. Sounds good. <laughs> Alright, thanks, and I'll see you for another video soon. Bye.